Hey, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today we're going to talk about Kyle's Subaru build. Check it out. So Kyle's a returning customer. He originally got a pocket port and he was stepping up to power and he wanted to make a full port. Now we've all seen people make big power with, well I should say, some of the race car guys, you see them making big power with a stock head. But there's a difference because they have methanol, they're gonna run a lot of boost, and you just can't do that on a street car. When you have a street car, the best thing you can do is you're making 700 plus on a Subaru, at least. Uh, you could just do a full port over the pocket port and it'll make the same power at a lower boost level. And it'll make power everywhere. It's not just gonna be in one little spot. As long as it's ported in a, uh, in a modest way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is we ported the area underneath the valve seat and the short side radius. This is called a pocket port, a bowl, or uh, it gets a lot of different names. But what we do is we port this area and the short side radius and we make it in relation to the size of the valve. So it's a percentage of the size of the valve that this here gets reshaped and sized to. And you can see the pocket port through the runner side and you can see that the runner is stocked that is called a pocket port so there's nothing more done to the to the runner itself it's just only in the bowl area which is right here which is the area underneath the valve and we do it without the guides because you can't reach here with a valve guide in there and this is a cnc port but we previously pocket ported it like i said and it didn't blend in right here but this is uh this is the pocket port with a CNC. And this is the full port. So it's a full CNC port, and you'll notice here that there is some area that wasn't touched by the CNC. Uh, everything else was, but this was not. So what we do is we're gonna blend this. Now, when you come here and here, there's like a hard edge right here. So what we're gonna do is just blend that in. Does it really affect flow? Not really, it's just, you know, just OCD. So a lot of people won't touch that. They'll just leave it. Um, and that's fine too, but we also get rid of all these sharp edges that are right here and blend it all in so it's all nicey nice. And here's a look at the exhaust. As you can see, the CNC hit all of it, but we still have to take away all these sharp edges. These sharp edges, um, the biggest thing that I don't like about it is it's a heat collector. Heat does not like sharp edges, so it will collect here and sometimes it can actually crack the head if you run enough boost. So what a lot of people don't know is that those sharp edges if you blunt them, it actually picks up airflow. I don't want to get into theories, but I just want to let you know that there is airflow to be found if you just blunt it. So now we're going to go blend it, blunt it, check it out. So for all the guys who think that a CNC is more accurate, just remember when you're dealing with a casting, the casting is your inaccurate part in this situation. Absolutely, the CNC is an accurate machine, uh, but it's dumb. It doesn't know where the port is. It just knows where it's supposed to be. So you'll see on the first head I showed you on the intake side, we had to do a lot of blending. And on the second head, there's almost nothing. And that is all the time with all these castings, every single head is different. All right, so now that the CNC is all blended in, it's time for guides and then we'll ream them. Keep watching.
of the process is setting lash. And setting lash is, let me show you. On a camshaft, it's shaped basically like an egg, right? So you have your ramp here, and then it has the nose. And then here is the base circle. So the base circle is basically the two fast parts of the camshaft. And what we're doing is we're setting clearance to this part of the camshaft here. So the bucket comes up, the valve goes up, and then there has to be a clearance on the bottom side of that. We'd like to see the clearance from six to 10 thousandths on the intake and 10 to 14 on the exhaust. Now we're not gonna sit here and change buckets and do all that crazy jazz. We buy either one or two sizes of buckets and then we machine the valve because we're machinists. We machine the valve to fit the lash that we need. So what Greg's gonna do is gonna remove the valve and we machine it. We machine it on our quick way valve refacer. He'll lock the valve in. And you hit it against a stone. The dial indicator. Take the material off. Wipe it down. And then he's gonna check the lash again. It's important to note that we use an L-shaped feeler gauge. And the reason why we use an L-shaped feeler gauge is because it takes tension off of where we're going here. So if you can see, Greg had to go inside here, right? So there is all this to mess with, all this. So when using an L-shaped feeler gauge, you can actually go in here and it's tension free and you get a better feel because it is a feeler you get a better feel of what the actual lash is. It's also important to note that feeler gauge, feeler, is a very personal thing. Some guys might feel something different than you, right? So even though they're lashing it, they're going off of their feel, and their feel might be different than your feel. So it's kind of, that's why there is a, uh, a range that you can be with it. We're in the last stop of this build. Now we're ready for assembly. The head's been milled, lashed. We installed bronze guides, valve jobbed it. The whole nine yards. Now, what parts do we put into it? As you can see, the head's milled. We put bronze guides. It's valve jobbed. It's CNC ported. This thing is ready to rock and roll. A little CNC port action on the intake side. She's a beauty in the back too. A little exhaust. Kyle's making 700 horsepower, so we went with the Power Pack 3, and that's gonna include a set of GSC intake and exhaust valves. They're super alloy on the exhaust. And we went with the 5073 conical spring kit. And we paired that with a GSC S2 camshaft. We've used the S2 cam up to 1100 horsepower successfully, so we really don't need to go much bigger than that, especially for a street car. The last part of this is we're gonna check spring height. We check spring height on every single cylinder head that comes through here. And we actually, more than just spring height, we check the spring itself. So I got in our Buxton spring tester and we pressed a magic button. And here we have 100 pounds on the seat, 235 open, and we're 142 away from bind. Now we are gonna close this up a little bit because the spec is 105 on the seat, but we're pretty much there. Thanks for watching our build. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. What do you want to see next? Make sure you mention it. Toodles.